What do you see when you open Excel? A big blank spreadsheet. I think oftentimes a blank canvas can be intimidating. There are so many things we can do and so many ways to start that it makes it hard to focus our attention on the first step. At a very high level, each Excel file is called a workbook and there can be many different spreadsheets or sheets in each workbook. At the bottom of the workbook I have open, you can see a tab for each sheet called Sheet 1, Sheet 2, and Sheet 3. For the rest of the course, we're going to use a sample data set as an example to demonstrate the content from each lecture. Since this course is geared towards insurance professionals, we're going to use a data set with insurance losses. You don't need to understand the concept behind the data itself. Remember, this is just to show you examples of how the content from the course can be applied. However, if you're going to be working in the insurance industry, or you've already been in this industry for a while, then it's good to know that average losses, or severity, is a concept you will hear time and time again at work. It's the metric insurance companies use to monitor how much they're paying for claims on average. This is also not actual data from any given insurance company. I just made it up for the purpose of this course. Here is the sample data we'll be using. There are five columns. Column A and B specify the year and month. Column C is the total losses the insurance company paid on claims in that year and month. Column D is the count of the claims that were paid in the same year and month. And column E is the average loss calculated by dividing the losses by the counts. The data starts with year 2013 and ends with 2015. In this lecture, we're going to talk about some of the keystrokes that are very helpful for navigating efficiently through Excel. When I say keystroke, I'm referring to a sequence of buttons on your keyboard that is a shortcut for a task in Excel. The way that everyone knows to move around in a spreadsheet is by pressing the up, down, left, or right keys on your keyboard. Each time you press the key, your cursor will simply move one cell in the direction you pressed, or if you hold down a key, the cursor will continue to move in the direction you pressed. On my screen, I'm pressing the right arrow to move one cell to the right, and if I hold the down arrow, my cursor will move down the column. But what if you have a long list of names in Excel and you want to go to the bottom of the list? The list could be hundreds or even thousands of rows, and it'd be a waste of time to sit there and hold the down arrow. A quicker way to do this is to hold down control and the down arrow to skip to the bottom of the list. This keystroke will also work if you have a list with blank rows and you want to skip to the next row with a value. Let me show you an example of this keystroke. If I go back to cell A1 on my screen, I'll hold down control and press the down arrow and it'll skip down to row 37 that we can see is the last row in this list. If I hold the control key and press the right arrow, the cursor skips to the far right column. Now if I hold control and press the up arrow, the cursor moves back to the first row. And last, if I hold control and press the left arrow, the cursor skips back to cell A1. Oftentimes, when working in Excel, you're going to want to highlight or select a group of cells whether it's to apply a certain formatting to the group or just to delete them. You could use your mouse or finger pad to select certain cells, but you'll find that it can save you a lot of time to use the keystrokes. This keystroke is very similar to the last one I mentioned, 
except you also hold down the shift key. For example, if you have a list and you want to select an entire column in that list, you can hold down Control and Shift and press the down arrow to highlight the entire column. On my screen, if I hold down Control and Shift and press the down arrow, the entire list in column A will be highlighted. And now, if I hold down Control and Shift again and press the right arrow, the entire selection will be highlighted. The keystrokes for copy, paste, and cut are the same in Excel as you're probably already used to. This is Control C, Control V, and Control X, respectively. But another helpful and similar keystroke is for paste special values. When you get comfortable using formulas in Excel, you'll start to have formulas in many of your cells. If you try to copy and paste a cell with a formula in it, the value in the cell may change after you paste it. This is a good example of when you would want to paste special values. This way, you would drop the formula, but keep the value in the cell you paste to. This keystroke is simply Alt, H, V, V, and in this keystroke, you're not going to hold down the keys, instead you just press one at a time. In cell E2 on my screen, you can see that this is a formula. It's cell C2 divided by D2. So if I want to just paste the value from this cell, I'll press Control C to copy the cell, and then I'll move over one cell and press Alt, H, V, V, and now just the value from cell E2 has been pasted into cell F2. The last keystroke I'm going to talk about is used to move between different sheets in a workbook. This will save time because you won't have to reach for your mouse whenever you want to switch between sheets. The keystroke is simply control and page down or page up. The page down and page up buttons should be on the right hand side of your keyboard. If I press control page down, you can see that we move to sheet one. If I press control page down again, we move to sheet two. Now if I press control and page up, we'll move back to sheet one. And one more time, we'll move back to the sample data sheet. Keep these shortcuts in mind as we move throughout the course. There is also a cheat sheet of these keystrokes in the attachments for this lecture. In this lecture, we're going to move on to some basic formulas that you need to have in your Excel skill set. These are left, right, sum, and average. There will be a cheat sheet for these formulas included with this lecture and a short quiz when we're finished. We'll start with the left and right functions. Let's say you have a cell that contains your customer's first and last name, Joe Smith, for example. But what if you want to have his first and last name in two separate cells? This is an example of when you would want to use the left or right functions. To create a cell with Joe Smith's last name only, into the cell you'll type equals right, you'll add an open parenthesis. First, you're going to reference the cell that contains Joe Smith's whole name, so in this case it's cell A1, comma, the number of characters you want to grab from that cell. Since Smith is five characters, we'll say five. And then you close the parenthesis. So your formula will end up looking like this. Equals, right, open parenthesis, the cell you want to reference, comma, the number of characters you want to grab from that cell, close parenthesis. The left function is very similar. Using the same example, if you wanted to grab Joe Smith's first name only, you would type equals left 
open parenthesis. Again, the cell you want to reference. So A1, which contains Joe Smith's whole name, comma, the number of characters you want to grab from that cell. In this case, since Joe is three characters, we'll put three, and then close parenthesis. So the formula will end up looking like this. Equals left, open parenthesis, the cell you want to reference, comma, the number of characters you want to grab from that cell, close parenthesis. And you can see that the value we get in this cell is Joe Smith's first name. Now let's move on to the sum function. If you want to sum a certain selection of cells, you're going to use the sum function, and into the cell, you're going to type equals sum, open parenthesis, and highlight the group of cells you want included in the sum. I'm going to go back to our sample data set to demonstrate this function. We have columns with losses and claim counts for each month in 2013, 14, and 15. If we want to add the losses to get the total losses for these three years, we would simply type equals sum, open parenthesis, and select the entire column, and we'll do this using the keystroke from an earlier lecture. I'll hold down Control, Shift, and press up, close parenthesis. And now I have highlighted the entire column with losses. Here you can see this summed all the losses that we highlighted in column C. Last, we'll cover the average function. This is very similar to the sum function in that it's going to take the average of the group of cells that you specify in the formula. You're going to type equals average, open parenthesis, and then you're going to select the group of cells that you want to take an average of. So we'll take the average of the counts, and I'll hit Control Shift up, and close parenthesis to highlight all the counts in column D. And here we can see the formula took the average of all the counts that we highlighted in column D. One thing to note is that when you start to type a formula in Excel, Excel will try to help you by telling you what needs to be put in the parentheses for that formula. It's hard to learn formulas this way without any prior knowledge, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be able to use Excel's help to guide you if you forget how to fill out a piece of the formula. But if you close your eyes